Hello, boys and girls. I hope you've had a great week. Do you remember what we talked about for the past few weeks in the book of Exodus in the Bible? We've talked about baby Moses, the burning bush, the ten plagues, and the Israelites crossing the Red Sea. Today we're going to learn even more about Moses and the Israelites. Do you know what happened after the Israelites crossed the Red Sea? You can read about this in detail in the book of Exodus chapter 15, beginning in verse 22. After the Israelites crossed the Red Sea, they began trekking through the desert wilderness on their way to Mount Sinai. Do you think they were relieved and happy that they had just escaped from the Egyptians? It seems like they would be, but nope. Believe it or not, after only three days, three days, they began to complain and whine because they were thirsty and hungry. They even began to complain to Moses and said they would rather go back to Egypt. Wait, what? That doesn't make any sense. They should be thankful for all that God has done for them. This reminds me of a time. What a great day to begin our vacation. I've been looking forward to this for so long. Won't this be fun? Yes, it will. I can't wait to be in the mountains, smelling the fresh pine trees and enjoying some fun family time together. I'm bored. I'm hot. Susie's crowding me. I need more room. Kids? I can't believe what I'm hearing. Are you excited to be on vacation? Yes, but it's taking so long to get there. Yeah, I'm thirsty. Kids, I brought plenty of water and snacks for everyone. Susie, can you reach the cooler? I suppose that Eddie should have to get it. He's the thirsty one. Fine, I'll get it. Oh, reach over here. Ah! That's, that's not a hit. That's not it. That's not it. I, I think I better go. You have plenty of snacks, and yet all you are doing is complaining. Well, it's just that Eddie is hogging all the air conditioning and not being very nice to me. That's because you took the red bowl I want for breakfast this morning. Eddie, instead of complaining about not getting the bowl you wanted, you should be thankful you got a nice, healthy breakfast to eat. Susie, you should be happy we have warm weather instead of snow. Now, can you please just enjoy the beautiful scenery of God's creation outside? But I'm still bored! Why don't you look for wildlife or interesting things out of your window? Or play I Spy or something? Oh, okay. But can we just be there already? Susie, you shouldn't have any candy right now. I packed some healthy snacks, though. I don't like these. Carrots, peanuts, apples, they're not any good. I brought beef jerky, too. Yuck! These foods are good for you. 
and they'll give you lots of energy to play at the cabin. Yeah, but I don't want that food. I want something different. Are you going to let us play in the creek when we get there? No, not tonight. It'll be too late and too close to dinner time. Let us do anything we like. Okay, kids, that's enough. Neither of you are being thankful for the blessings you have. When you complain, you're telling God he doesn't know how to take care of you or meet your needs. It says that you know more than God and it shows that you don't trust God. Do you believe that God loves and cares for you? Yes, sir. Yes, Dad. Then you need to show it by being content with what he has given you and being thankful for your family, friends, and most importantly, for the love that God has for you. So when you feel like whining or complaining, instead, think of all the ways God has cared for you. Let's talk about this. Eddie, what is one way God has blessed you? Um, well... He's given us nice sunny weather for our vacation. That's right. That's right. Susie, how has God blessed you? Um, with good, healthy food that helps us grow strong and a mom and dad that love us and take good care of us. That's right, kids. It's good that we talked about this. Doesn't it make you feel better? Yes. yes. We should always remember Philippians 2.14, which says, Do all things without complaining and arguing. Yes, let's be thankful for all that we have, and let's have a wonderful vacation together. Yay! This will this be fun! fun. So just like my kids were whining on our trip to the mountains, the Israelites were complaining because they were hungry and thirsty. So what did God do? Hmm, did he send the Israelites back to Egypt? No. Did he let them starve? No. He took care of them and provided them with plenty of food and water to survive. Hmm, I wonder how he did that. Well, he provided plenty of clean water to drink, and believe it or not, he made manna rain down from heaven in the mornings and quail in the evenings. What in the world is manna? Well, it is a round seed that's like coriander, which is a spice that we can now find at our local grocery store. So, people would gather up these seeds and grind them up to make small wafers. They would then bake the wafers, and they tasted like honey. Who knows what quail is? Hmm. Well, quail is a small bird that um, kind of tastes like chicken. So, God provided lots of meat, too, for the Israelites to eat. Guess how long God did this for the Israelites? Do you think it was one week? How about one month? One year? Nope. God provided water, manna, and quail for his people for 40 years. Yep, 40 years while they traveled through the desert wilderness. God loved his people, and he took good care of them, just like he loves you and me and takes good care of us, too. So remember, even when we feel like things aren't going well or like we want them to, God is going to be there for us because he loves us very much. Let's close our lesson today with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for all that you do for us. You give us food and water, 
You bless us with our families and friends, and we know that you love us very, very much. Help us to remember this when we get tired or when things aren't going the way we want them to. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. That's all for today, kids. I hope you have a great week, and we'll see you very soon.